All right, it's 502. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. We'll also just let some other people come in as we do so. Uh, so this is the community presentations of the 2021 cohort of emerging leaders in the arts. My name is Sarah Dildine. For those of you who don't know me, I'm our exhibitions manager and I also am the, the program director of Emerging Leaders in the Arts or ELA. Actually gonna go back to the first slide here. Before I introduce uh, all of our fellows, um, I'm gonna go ahead and give some background to Emerging Leaders in the Arts to this program. For those of you that are interested uh, or have anybody who is interested in this program, um, I'd love to give that background. Um, but uh, yes, this, this year we have three fellows. That's Arlene Ariola, Sydney Pace, and Tess Reinhardt. That's them here. We're gonna be hearing from each of them regarding the projects that they've been working on through the course of the program. Um, Arlene, Sydney, and Tess will go in that order uh, and the presentations will each be about uh, five to 10 minutes. We'll be hearing from them shortly. So a little bit of background on emerging leaders in the arts in this program, how it got originated. Uh, in 2015, there was a study by Andrew, the w, uh, Andrew W. Mellon Foundation, and this study found um, quite a bit of information about the uh, staff of museums, specifically related to art museums, and found that um, it was disproportionate in relation to race and gender in terms of the art museum leadership. Because of this study, several, um, several initiatives had been created, uh, fun uh, funders had taken note, of the disparities of the, um, of the staff represented and the artists represented within museums, um, art museums specifically, and had created different programs. Um, following this study, the museum, and actually about the same time, 2015 to 2017, uh, the Museum of Contemporary Art Santa Barbara started to complete several diversity related programs. Um, in 2017, we had a program called Take Part, Make Art, Arte Para Todos. And this was uh, based in Santa Barbara County. And essentially we were taking a sculptural installation and um, taking it to low income areas of Santa Barbara city and county. Uh, this was a pretty extensive program that lasted over the year of 2017. And it was really great to see the community involved. We had several different artists going to different locations um, and essentially bringing the art to the public instead of asking the public to come to the museum, which is not always accessible. In 2017, we also opened an exhibition called Guatemala from 33,000 kilometers, um, contemporary art 1960 to present. That was in, um, in relation to the Pacific Standard Time LA LA that was going on at the time in 2017 with several other museums as well across California. And that uh, museum was the, or that uh, exhibition that we held in 2017 was the first exhibition um, of Guatemalan contemporary art in the United States. And it also had the first text of record of Guatemalan contemporary artists. Uh, we had about 76 artists and about 96 works in that exhibition. It was in three different locations and the programming was also pretty extensive with a symposium at Westmont College. Um, and this was um, a really amazing exhibition for the museum. It, it opened up a lot of um, great dialogue and also started a lot of initiatives within the museum as well and helped us to connect with our community even further. Uh, in 2017 also, the Ford Foundation and Walton Family Foundation um, released that they would be holding something called DAMLI, which is called the Diversifying Art Museum Leadership Initiative. Uh, essentially, they were requesting museums to answer the question, how do we diversify art museum leadership? Museum of Contemporary Art Santa Barbara was one of 21 institutions to uh, answer that question. And we answered with uh, Emerging Leaders in the Arts. So Emerging Leaders in the Arts is an experimental program. It's an experimental uh, fellowship. And it's something that we're trying to do uh, with, with our local students, with our local um, high school, college, and above students and individuals who identify as people of color and who are interested in museum leadership and interested in museums um, and museum works. Uh, the base curriculum is outlined here. Essentially, it's an extensive program. Uh, with monthly meetings, we have uh, discussions that are centered around diversity and inclusion with different trainings. We have um, curatorial specific trainings as well as collections trainings, cultural competency trainings with Just Communities, who's one of our partners. And they also hold a foundational retreat at the beginning of the year. 
Um, we also used to have field trips to LA and San Francisco. And with COVID, of course, that's on pause. Um, but in lieu of that, we've been conversating with uh, different museum staff, different curators um, of different levels and um, previous ELA um, fellows and mentors and artists as well. There's also a year long project that all of the individuals complete, which is the, the point of today. This is gonna be the day that they'll present all of their projects to the community. Uh, and these projects are centered around diversity inclusion. They're specifically for the community of Santa Barbara and beyond, specific, now that we're able to be virtual. A lot of these projects have reached um, further audiences than just Santa Barbara. Um, but these are specifically meant to encourage diversity inclusion and also provide experience for each of the fellows. They also have individual mentorship, which is actually a huge part of this program. The mentors continue to guide the fellows throughout their uh, throughout the length of the program and um, provide another another networking opportunity for them. That way, as they exit the program, they have people that they can still reach out to um, regarding career and um, just life questions in general. Just a little history of the previous cohorts we had in 2018 was our first cohort. This is the, the group on the screen here. Um, in that year, it was a 12 month long program that was in person. We were able to go to San Francisco and LA. With that program, um, we had two exhibitions, one zine, one pop-up exhibition, one workshop series uh, with El Centro and one initiative within the museum. That initiative uh, essentially encouraged and established uh, a bilingual text um, initiative within the museum. So for all of the, ex the exhibition related materials, we have bilingual text. It is now required for our, uh, for our space to have Spanish alongside English for our um, Spanish speaking community as well. In the second year of ELA, this was, this was the group here. We also had two exhibitions by our team fellows. We had one presentation series specifically relating to farm workers in Fillmore County. And we had one community art pop-up event that was extremely extensive um, and invited over 19 artists in the community. All of the exhibitions over the last, uh, over the first two years were with local artists and um, were curated by the teen groups uh, of, the, of the ELA program. In this year, actually I'll go back another one. In this year, in, in 2021, uh, 2020, we did not have a cohort. We actually started this, this uh, January, 2021. But in this, uh, this year, we did not have teens. We only had um, college of age and above. Um, and that is uh, mainly because we've shifted the program. We have a teen program specifically for um, our high school students and we encourage them to join ELA as they finish, uh, as they finish their high school. But um, Emerging Leaders in the Arts is specifically for um, individuals who are interested in defining their career as either the museum path or art related path and in uh, leadership. This is a lot of text and I don't expect everybody to read this, but I do want this to be accessible um, and just to have a note of goals and outcomes. This will be on our ELA website and uh, will be posted on our Instagram as well if anyone is interested, but um, I just wanted to talk about the short term goals for ELA and the general outcomes, the long term goals as well. Essentially with the ELA program, what we hope to do is provide insight into the museum world. We hope to have students understand the different roles that they can take within museums and make them more realistic in terms of understanding how to obtain them. We also hope to, to uh, create firm relationships with art leaders in Santa Barbara, LA, San Francisco and beyond now that we're able to go virtual with, with many of our speakers. Um, but this is done through guided mentorship, guided discussions, one-on-one um, -on -one and um, group meetings as well. Um, and specifically what we really hope to do is, is have a uh, program long uh, experience based project that will provide each fellow with, with uh, some meaningful experience relations that they can um, move forward with. Um, that way, once they leave the program and move into different positions, move into different um, grad school programs or wherever the, the fellows uh, end up, they have these tangible skills that they can relate to, to wherever they go. Um, Long-term goal for ELA is, of course, to shift the statistics of art museum leadership within the United States to increase diverse voices. 
um, and that we're still seeing shift. Some of our outcomes, some of our fellows have uh, joined museum staff. We had one fellow from our first year join the Hammer staff. Um, we've actually had two fellows on staff here at the museum over the past three years. Um, and several of the fellows have been at uh, other Santa Barbara nonprofits. Um, but one difficulty that um, I have come to understand being in Santa Barbara and what a lot of my colleagues in Santa Barbara have understood related to diverse individuals here in Santa Barbara is that it's just so hard to keep our people here. It's so hard to keep diverse voices here. Um, so my goal with this program has also been to create opportunities for diverse voices and uh, people of color specifically um, to stay in Santa Barbara and to stay and uh, to help guide more programming here and ensure that diverse voices have an outlet and have um, resources and, um, and are heard and are seen. So that brings me back to our cohort this year. Again, that's Arlene, Sydney, and Tess. And it's been such a pleasure to meet them, to be with them, um, to have monthly meetings and check-ins and to see them grow and to see their programs emerge and evolve over this over the, the last eight months uh, or nine months uh, almost. Um, so I'm gonna have Arlene join us first. She's gonna talk about Calming Ritual, her film screening and exhibition, uh, which was last week, I think, was it? I think it was last week. Um, and uh, I'll let her talk about all that, but um, it was such a blast. So um, thank you, Arlene, for joining. Um, if you can unmute yourself, I'm gonna go ahead and spotlight you and I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Okay, hello. Let's see, let me share my screen. My name is Arlene <laughs> and I'll be presenting to you my, pre my experience in ELA and my Calming Ritual Queer Film Exhibition. And a little bit about me is that I'm a soon to be UC Berkeley student. I transfer there from Santa Barbara City College and I'm a first generation American and I'm graduating this fall. It's very exciting. Oops, sorry. Let's mute that. And these are some photos of myself and my family as well. Just to give you some context of who I am. I enjoy art house cinema, analog photography. I love point and shoot cameras and just hanging out in museums as well. And then why ELA? Well, I heard about the program through Melinda Gandara, who was a professor I had at Santa Barbara City College. And I keep in touch with her pretty frequently. And she inspired me to apply to the program because I have always had an interest in the arts, but I have always kind of felt discouraged to be a part of it. So she really pushed me and encouraged me to be a, get to know the community better, which I really appreciated. And in that moment, I felt that I was, it was like an opportunity to grow, especially since it was during the pandemic and I wanted to get to know my community a bit better. Yeah. And even though things took place online, I did feel incredibly connected with everyone that I was working with. It was really sweet to have weekly meetings. And it was just nice to have catch ups before we started talking about anything. And yeah, they really uplift, uplift, uplifted my voice as a queer person of color and just generally uplifted all of our voices. They really made us feel seen and safe and heard anything that we wanted to talk about. And it was very special. Yeah, I really loved those moments. And in ELA, it also just felt really special to hear people speak. And it was really nice to have people from past years, past cohorts, speak about their experiences in ELA as well. And yeah, I just really liked it. I had people we had people talk about like having in-person pop-ups and then illustrators come and speak. And it was just really special to hear the diversity of people's projects, especially because in those moments, I wasn't hundred percent sure what I wanted to do with my project yet. And yeah, I really just liked learning in general, how to budget and careers within museum spaces. I'd never thought that I could work in a museum in the past and I have really, my mindset has shifted since being in this program, which has been really special. 
And as for my pro project, um, I created this film exhibition called Calming Ritual. I don't really know what my thinking was behind that name, but I just, yeah, it was just really interesting. And I worked in Ojai for a few years and I feel like there's a lot of spiritual, spirituality in the area. And for some reason, it just really stuck with me. So I figured to have some sort of silly name that also could be serious <laughs> um, as my exhibition program, just because I wanted to keep things a bit light and just safe for everyone to not feel discouraged to join or look into it. And yeah, a queer film exhibition felt necessary for me as a queer person of color who lived in Santa Barbara. And I always had an interest in independent films, but I didn't really hear or read reviews or like watch anything that really um, highlighted queer filmmakers other than the Criterion channel, which is an art house film archive. But even then, they really only highlighted queer cinema during Pride Month. And it was usually a lot of queer themed films like The Watermelon Woman. I'm not sure if you guys have heard of that film, but it was just about more, it's very stereotypical in a sense that films are just, yeah, she just talked about being queer and it was very queer themed. And I wanted people to feel inclined to apply and have any genre in their, in my film exhibition. I didn't want to, I didn't want people to feel boxed in or limited with their films. I just wanted to highlight queer voices and amplify them. And for project details, the Calming Ritual is a California-based curatorial screening project. And this year I focused on short films and essentially just bringing queer filmmakers together. And right now I am currently based in Oakland, but since I was in Santa Barbara, I decided to call it a California-based screening project. And yeah, I wanted to uplift voices that have been suppressed for generations before us. And I reviewed about 80 filmmakers and nearly 100 film submissions, and the reach went way farther than I was ever expecting from Santa Barbara to New Mexico to Canada, and even across the across North America and beyond that with, to, with places from Belgium, France, and Spain, and even the UK, which I just thought was really mind boggling. Um, especially because I didn't really have, I don't really have a big following on social media and I was just very pleasantly surprised to see that there was an interest in this exhibition I decided to curate. And yeah, I didn't have any particular audience that I wanted to be a part of the screening other than have them be queer filmmakers that wanted their voice uplifted and I wanted to uplift their voice. And yeah, since Film is a huge interest of mine. I just wanted everyone to tune in when they can. And my mentor, Alexander Terry, really guided me in making my vision a reality from early spring, from January and February, up until this past week when I had my exhibition. And it's just been a wild ride. It's been very, very fun. <laughs> and this is the flyers I had for my film exhibition. I had. I commissioned someone I know, someone, a family member of mine to create these flyers, which felt very special. I know I could technically have made them myself, but I wanted to involve the community and just have everyone be a part of it in any way possible. So it was really nice to have commission someone and have them create a vision with the words I was thinking. So yeah, it was very nice. <laughs> And then here's a screenshot of the website that I created, as well as the uh, little screenshot of the film screening that I had last week as well. And it was just, I wanted to create a website that was a resource for anyone, not necessarily people that just submitted to the film exhibition. So I had films that I really enjoyed. I included films that the folks that submitted enjoyed. I had comfort films. Uh, they're like no movies that they watch when they're feeling in a creative rut. And I just, it's just very special to me. And I hope that other people enjoy it as well, because I wanted to create a space that people can go to, even if they just want to learn a bit more about queer cinema and how it's not necessarily boxed into queer themed films. 
And here are only a few of the um, movie posters of some of the films that I had on my screening. This is only one, two, three, four, six film, six film posters. And there were 15 people in total that I picked for my film screening out of about 80 people that had submitted. And yeah, so it was very difficult to have to narrow it down so much. And even then I did pick quite a few filmmakers, but I didn't, I, if I could have, I would have just let everyone in. <laughs> but yeah, it's just very special to see how, how creative all of the people are and how much this community is needed and how little similar exhibitions and events exist because I wasn't aware that, I knew that film exhibitions needed to be uplifted more, but I didn't realize that across the world, it was more, it was necessary. And then the outcome for the, from the project is that this, I just feel that this project is important to the community because representation can break down barriers and open us to new ideas and create powerful role, role models and even be a source of inspiration. So I created a live stream for my exhibition premiere just because I know I could have just uploaded it on the internet and have anyone see it, but I wanted to create an event so that people can talk to each other and just get to know each other a little bit more because I wanted everyone to know who they're working with and know who else is a part of the exhibition rather than just uploading it online because I know that a lot of exhibitions that do occur online just kind of get thrown into the abyss of the internet and I yeah I just wanted to make it a little bit more personal for everyone and yeah this project just showed the beauty of queer cinema and that queer filmmakers aren't don't only make the stereotypical films and this project showed me how necessary it was to hold a space for folks interested in film that subverts the dominant culture. I received many emails of people thanking me for creating a community for like-minded people. And I just, it was very, very sweet and rewarding to hear that. Let's see, next slide. Oops, sorry about that. Oh no, my, my computer is being a bit slow right now and it kicked me out of my presentation. Okay. Okay, back to regular programming. So hopes for the future is that this project essentially inspired me to keep this project alive post ELA. I definitely feel motivated to want to make this a yearly thing and have more, have it be more specific and potentially even have like fright nights or um, comedies or rom-coms or just have exhibitions and just screenings potentially in person if that if COVID permits in the future just I want to be able to create a space that people feel comfortable going to and also ELA helped me learn the different ways that one can work in museums which is really special and it allowed me to narrow down my vision for a potential career. I'd love to work in a museum doing similar work that MCASB is doing with ELA, especially because I am an ethnic studies major at Berkeley. Um, I feel like the work we do that they do could help me and I could help them as well in diversifying spaces. Because before the fellowship, I had no real intention of ongoing to graduate school or continuing my education but now I feel drawn to continue expanding my knowledge within film and curation. Yeah, thank you to MCASB for hosting ELA and my mentor, Alexandra Terry and Sarah for always rooting for all of us and my fellows, my fellow fellows, Tess and Sydney, and just the community in general for showing up and supporting local art. Even if it is through computer screen, it is really special to have people show up. Arlene, thank you so much. Um, I just have to say your screening was so much fun. I was, I had such a blast and um, I'll add myself, but uh, yeah, it was, it was so amazing. I think that the, the turnout was awesome. I highly recommend, I, I hope it's okay. I put, um, I put the link to it, to the screening in the chat, as well as the, the website for Coming Ritual. So please yeah. check that out. And uh, the Instagram for Arlene. So please, please, please check out what Arlene is doing. Um, super exciting stuff. And 
uh, just to create a space like that, you know, virtual or in person, I think is amazing. And um, to hear the feedback that you received is, is also incredible. Um, and I really hope that Coming Rich will continue on. I love the name and I love that you said that, mm -hmm. that you're not sure where it came from, but um, thank you so much for digging into your year and um, congratulations because it was, such a <laughs> it was so amazing. Um, I definitely had the pleasure. I was so, I, you, you know, in, in a typical ELA year, we all four of us would have gone to LA and San Francisco. And I had the pleasure of meeting Arlene in person recently. And it was, um, uh, it was a bummer because I it was the first time and it was what well, had been all year that I hadn't um, been able to spend that time with you in museums, but I was so, so, um, so lucky and happy to be able to do that. But um, thank yeah. you so much, Arlene. Thank um, you. Sydney, I'm going to have you join us. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring you on. Hi, hi. Um, I'm gonna meet myself again, but welcome Sydney. And uh, I'll have you um, share your screen as well whenever you're ready. Okay. Hello, everybody. Okay, give me one second while I do this. Oops, what's going on here? Okay. Oops, wrong button. Sorry, guys. Hold on. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Hello, everybody. My name is Sydney. Um, yeah, I'm a UCSB student uh, majoring in fine art. Um, this fall is my last quarter, and um, I am in the book arts department at the College of Creative Studies. Um, my focus is in printmaking, although I am very interested in um, craft processes such as weaving. Um, these are just a few, just like quick examples of my work. This one on the um, on the left is something I've made during the pandemic, and it's a paper weaving and collage that I then digitally collaged, um, and then this. Um, this image on, on the right is um, cut up mono prints that I manipulated on a scanner bed. So I like to mess around with stuff um, and experiment. And then I wanted to just include these photos because I mean, look at my family, they're so cute. Um, these are my kids and my boyfriend and this is my fur baby. Um, yeah, they're just the best. I love them. They're everything. So um, ELA, well, how I was introduced to the program was through um, one of my mentors, Melinda Gandara, and she's been um, a professor that I, I had while I was at Santa Barbara City College. And since then, she's just really like, just such an angel, just somebody that I um really respect and um value and um she's always shooting me opportunities so she was like oh you should apply to this um and I did although I was a little hesitant because I had just had a baby <laughs> and so I was like afraid of being overwhelmed but um the virtual aspect ended up really working out well in that regard um but the reason why I wanted to join the ELA program was um, I felt like I hadn't really um, developed so much like outside of college. Like I had just been like in city college, then at UCSB, like I felt like I was very much so like in a bubble. And so um, kind of similar to what Arlene said. Um, I, 
you know, as far as like coming and being more a part of the community, that's something I wanted to do and just kind of like break out of the bubble a little bit and gain some experience, um, you know, in the real world. Um, I also was really wanting to um, gain some professional skills um, and, you know, just, I mean, doing things like this, like presenting and just operating in a more professional way. Um, so that was something that um, I had wanted as well um, when I applied to uh, be in this program. And yeah, there was like so many things that I enjoyed about this program. I mean, yeah, community with um, my fellow fellows and with Sarah was just like, so awesome and um we would do a little icebreaker before our meetings is like the the bud the thorn and the rose and it was just a really nice way to like kind of see where everybody was at and um it like allowed for us to I don't know just have intimate moments and um yeah I just I felt very connected to everybody and um that's something that I really really enjoy enjoyed um, I also enjoyed the opportunity to create a funded community project because that has that, that's not something that I've done before. Like, you know, I had a grant and I had money and I was able to really just kind of design my own project, you know, and that was really awesome. Um, the first time that I had had that. So loved that. Um, I loved working and collaborating with um, the artists um, in my residency that I did for my project. It just like, yeah, it just like gave me so much, I don't know what the word is. It just invigorated me. Like I, I just felt really inspired by them and by just everything. Um, and I feel, I feel like the speakers that, um, that came on our meetings and really like shared with us, I felt like they were really diverse. And um, I really felt like I kind of got a little bit of everything, like Sarah set it up. So it was pretty like holistic, I feel like in the way, um, like all the different people that came, I, I, I felt like I learned a lot, like a little bit about a lot of different people. And I liked hearing everybody, um, describe like their journeys um, to kind of like get where they were. Um, that gave me like a lot of hope and it was really inspiring, um, you know, cause most people, you know, we think we should be linear but everyone's kind of like, woo, non-linear non and all over the place. So I really appreciated that. And um, yeah, there's lots of practical things I learned during this fellowship, um, like, financial planning, like five and 10 year planning. Uh, yeah, it was like big kid stuff. And I got to um, really see like the ins and outs of like all of the museum and, and curatorial procedures, like what goes into it. It's like extremely involved and I, I didn't know that. Um, so yeah, I, I, I was able to, you know, learn a little bit about that. And um, I also learned about facilitating and scheduling people <laughs> and, you know, facilitating like a, my residency and scheduling people is like really difficult. And um, yeah, Sarah is just like the master at that. But yeah, I, I feel like I, I, I really got so much um, out of this program and um, definitely things that I feel like I'm gonna use going forward, like into my career and like into my practice, even like as an artist. Um, so yeah, lots of really valuable stuff I learned. Um, so my project um, was a virtual artist residency in contemporary craft and um, my, 
my idea was like I, I wanted to create a space free for emerging BIPOC and LBGTQ artists to have a place, um, you know, have the time and a place, a virtual place, um, time, place, and money to work on a project. Um, I think it's so important for artists to have the time um, to experiment and create. And um, it's not always easy to do if you don't have the money, you know, if you need to be working to support yourself. It's not always easy to just kind of like work on something fun or experiment over here. So um, I really wanted to create that opportunity for um, artists, specifically um, craft artists who, um, yeah, they, they're, the, the artists that I chose were not um, trained um, in an academic way. They learned all, you know, like DIY and like communal, communally taught. Um, craft artists. So I really wanted um, to highlight them and to um, give them an opportunity to create. Um, sorry, let me move this. Um, so like the, the thing that inspired me is like I myself was looking at um, artist residencies. Um, to apply to and I've, I've just been kind of like looking and you know seeing what's out there and stuff and um one of the local ones that I was looking at was Blue Sky in um, New Kayama and Sarah was kind enough to like facilitate a meeting with um the director of that program and I was able to talk with him and kind of just like get a sense of um you know, just a sense of like how he kind of like breaks the program down and everything. And it was really um, enlightening. And I was like, okay, yeah, there's a lot that goes into um, running these um, residencies and, you know, organizing them. Um, so I was really grateful to have the opportunity to talk to him. Um, I also was thinking about, um, just like the need for community during the pandemic. I mean, we, you know, it's not like we're out there, you know, in the studio making art together, you know, like everyone's kind of like in their own, you know, they're sheltering in place and whatnot. So um, I really wanted, I wanted to create a space where we could come together and like have a sense of community even if it was virtually. Oops. Um, so yeah, some details of my project. Um, the artists, I, I sought them out and invited them. Um, and they're so amazing. Um, Cespi Miller and Becca Vasquez, these are the two artists that I invited. Um, I'll show some pictures of them in a little bit, but um, so I invited them and I, I, you know, had them write up their project proposals um, and I, you know, sent them a contract. I wrote up a contract that really like laid everything out as to like what would be expected of them. And um, so, you know, they agreed to do the five week long virtual residency. Um, we met six times. One, you know, one Zoom meeting a week. And um, our meetings uh, comprised of um, progress, pictures, and critique. And it was really cool because they, um, I was really pushing them to really document since their processes are so time based. Um, so they really like push themselves to really document their process. And um, it's like so amazing to just watch like from beginning to end, um, just to see the progress of something being created is like so beautiful. So um, yeah, so you, you know, we got to see their progress through each meeting. Um, my mentor Iman um, 
came and she gave um, feedback during critique and um, um, yeah, she's just so wonderful. And um, I also did, we did a weekly um, phone call, you know, like individually just to check in and like, you know, just to chat about art or life or like if they needed support. Um, but, but yeah, so this is Sespi Miller. Look at them, they're just so wonderful. This is Sespi and um, this is one of the baskets that Sespi made. It's a fishing creel, it's um, of Irish or origin. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, Sespi's practice is amazing. They go out and they, um, tend to willow and you know they harvest it and they they have a really special um relationship with the land um and yeah they they're so talented they make beautiful beautiful you know utilitarian objects that are meant to be made you know i mean used in real life and they're just so beautiful um so that's Sespi, and this is Becca Vasquez. Um, oh, also, sorry, Sespi is um, a local artist here in Santa Barbara. Um, this is Becca Vasquez, and she was somebody that I had been following on Instagram. She's um, a te she weaves textiles, and um, yeah, so I reached out to her on Instagram, and I felt really creepy, like being like, "Oh, I think you're great. Please participate in this thing." But she was like, "So cool." And um, yeah, she's she's based in El Paso, Texas. And like I said, she she is a weaver and um, also works with um, like uh, natural dyes and um, pigments. And this is an example of like she she makes earrings um, to sell. This is the, one of the ways that she supports herself. So she makes these earrings, you know, she really has to like bust them out. And um, it was really cool because she made these ones and she had the time, you know, and the funding to be able to experiment and do something new without having to think about like, oh, is, you know, do I have to sell this? Like, do I have to produce and like sell this? So it was really, really special that like, they both had the opportunity um, to do something like this. And um, they were just so like honored that I had invited them and, um, you know, invited them to participate in this. And, um, oh my, yeah, there's us, we're so cute. This is us during our last meeting. Um, yeah, and it was just really amazing working with them. Um, it was, definitely different for me to like take on the role of like a facilitator because I'm an artist and I feel like I usually would be like you know in their position so it was kind of an interesting thing for me to take on a different role and I feel like I learned a lot and um I learned yeah I learned you know organizing people is hard there's only three of us and it was really kind of challenging sometimes with scheduling and all that um and, oh yes, here, oh, also, sorry. Also, they um, both did artist talks that were hosted by MCASB last week. And um, they got to share with the community what they had been working on during the, um, during their time in this residency. And it was just like, so amazing. They did a great job. I'm sorry, there's an airplane sound. I live next to the airport. Um, and yeah, I, I, um, my future, my future plans of be graduating this fall from UCSB, like I said, um, and, uh, moving to San Diego in December and uh, with hopes of, you know, applying for my MFA in fine art at some point, um, in the near future. And yeah, thank you to uh MCASB for funding this this program and um thank you to Sarah you're so amazing Iman thank you to Sespi and Becca 
Thank you to Melinda. And of course, thank you to Tess and Arlene. Yay, Sydney, it is so, so, so amazing to, to hear you speak about this. I always love uh, the, the, pro the presentations at the end of the year because it's just so um, exciting to hear about um, how your experience was with your project and, and what you got out of it. Um, and Sespi and Becca were so incredible. Uh, I hope that some of the people on this call were able to check out and, and be a part of that talk. It was so lovely. Um, and that will be on our uh, YouTube page on the museum's YouTube page so you can see their talk. Um, and that will also live on the ELA webpage. But um, Sydney, I mean, you, I think you scheduled pretty well. I think that was okay. <laughs> I think that was fine. Um, but it is also really lovely to hear um, that you really pushed yourself. And I mean, I'm, I'm just so proud of you and excited for you with, with the project that you were able to create and accomplish. Because um, a virtual art residency, that's a six week program with two artists and you were able to support them in their work. And um, I just think it really um, reads to, to the museums, I mean, to, to ELA in itself of, you know, kind of furthering that work and, um, continuing to help artists and doing what they're doing. So thank you for, for undertaking that project and congratulations as well. And uh, thank you for speaking. And you're so sweet. You were making me blush when you were talking about all that stuff. So I appreciate you. <laughs> thank you, Sydney. Tess, it's now time for you. Um, I'm very excited to hear about, um, about your upcoming talk. I'll add your spotlight here and I'll remove mine, but welcome Tess, it's good to have you. Hello. Hi everyone. I'm gonna just uh, share my screen and go into it. Um, okay, okay, so here we go. Um, so I'm also part of this program and I am doing an event in September um, with students from, or like students and post-grad students from UCSB and uh, an artist named Mandy Harris-Williams. We're doing like a, a panel discussion about art community and like uh, digital age kind of feelings. So this is a little intro with me. Um, I do um, different like types of art, like I like doing like photography, um, video, um, animation, and then like, of course, graphic design. <laughs> um, and I made that poster down there for a film club I made with my friends, um, like when I was in college. And um, it's like a film like flyer for a screening we had. Um, so yeah, this is like kind of what I'm into. And then this is my family over here. Um, so yeah, shout out to them, uh, and my cat. Yeah. And cool. Next one. So what have I, what have I enjoyed about ELA? I've enjoyed, um, of course, like, you know, my fellow peers and stuff like that and getting to know people and like talking about cool things with people, um, and like, and who are also like really passionate about like museums and like art and like curating uh, different like people, different types of people and stuff. Um, so, uh, but I also enjoyed um, like learning about different projects related to like community and art um, that are like going on in Santa Barbara um, because when I was there, I didn't really know much about like these kind of like uh, nonprofits that were um, starting and stuff. So this is an example of one of the speakers that came and talked to us. Um, They're from Just Communities and um, they are a kind of a nonprofit that kind of does what do, they do things that I'm kind of interested in too. So that was one cool part about, you know, doing the meetings. Um, and this is uh, another reason why I did it too. I kind of wanted to like get like more professional with like my life. <laughs> so I was just like, oh, I'm really interested in art and museums. So why don't I do this program? Because um, it seems like um, it would be cool to meet people who are like, not like typical, like just like white people in museums. It'd be cool to like expand and meet people who are like, who like have similar kind of experiences in Santa Barbara. Um, 
And so, yeah, this is an example of something that I made from um, the program. Like it's a run of show and I never knew like you had to do this for like events. So um, Sarah encouraged us to make these. And this is mine for the upcoming event in September. So um, yeah, that was just like, like one of the tasks that I've, I felt like was really useful and like, and just very simple too. So yeah, more of like, what did I learn? And I learned basically just like building bridges with people and like kind of connecting with people who I admired and like bringing those people um, into a relation with other people who I also admired. So just like building community, you know, um, and like the importance of that, like in the art world. Oh, it's still forming, formatting. I love that. Okay, cool. Well, we're not watching a little video of my art, but we're going to do um, kind of a, a snippet from a talk with an artist named Josh Cloud, who I, uh, in, like I moderated their art, their artist talk with Uproot which is like, here, I'll just click play. It's like an artist talk. Attending tonight. And there's me talking. And there's people from UCSB that came out and he um, does like kind of like animation work and craft. And he was just talking about his practice to like the UCSB students and um, like grad students in the community. And I thought it was cool because like he was- On my typewriter to paste into my sketchbook he, so I could have like a tangible quote of it. Cause yeah. I don't know, that's something weird. He kind of just like talked about Each things other, like, that were like, how he kind of like organizes his practice and his like way of thinking. And like, I felt like that was helpful because like people um, like from my like year and stuff kind of felt like a little like lost, I think um, in the art department there because um, there's like this, like, I feel like for me, at least I didn't really feel very sure about the art world and like how to be like an actual artist, like in my undergrad. So I felt like it was cool to have people connect with, um, like artists who are like a little further down their, you know, like career path and like kind of get some, um, uh, you know, just like advice. So at the end, there was like a Q and A, I think. In about... I'm pretty sure there's a Q&A. Trying out glaze chemistry. Anyway, he, um, there was a Q&A, but that was kind of an, in, like, an inspiring sort of um, thing I did that made me think of like how I could shape my project with ELA. Thank you for attending. Ooh, and I'm going to go to the next one. Yeah, so this is Uproot. And we've had like other artist talks come in and like, you know, share their advice with like UCSB art students, uh, UCSB like BIPOC art students, you know. Um, and yeah, it was, it's been pretty cool. Um, so yeah, so this event will be a kind of panel discussion with three artists that I respect and um, Harvest Keeney uh, is one of the artists and uh, Mandy Harris Williams is another artist and um, Le uh, Leah Moment is like the third artist. So it's gonna be kind of like people from different points in their like careers as artists kind of like talking about like, you know, like different and like shared experiences related to like art and community building. So this is um, Mandy Harris Williams and she kind of like does a lot of work for um, basically like uh, um, decolonizing like um, social media um, and like trying to like resist like um, like kind of Instagram sort of like uh, like, like kind of like a algorithm, I guess, because it kind of like favors, you know, white people as like, you know, an ideal. And so she does like kind of like work to resist that. Um, and she describes herself as like a, a theorist, a multimedia conceptual artist, a writer, an educator, and a radio host. Oh, and also an internet community academic. And um, she does these kind of like talks that are like educational and like kind of like conceptual art <laughs> um, where she like addresses like different people um, and like kind of brings her work to their kind of attention. And um, this is like an example of like the work she's done and it's called the Brown Up Your Feed hashtag. And um, it's basically like by following this, you kind of like will see more 
black people and like brown people like on your Instagram feed. So it kind of like is like, you know, counteracting the like um, most likely like kind of I, like viewer centric ideals on Instagram and stuff like that. So yeah, that's her, her thing. And then Harvest um, was a photographer um, and this is a picture, uh, this is a photograph she took um, that I want to share. I thought it was very, very nice. Um, and this is also a photograph she took that is actually my friend um, <laughs> and, and they're here today. Um, so, hey, Francis. Um, <laughs> this is a photograph that she took uh, under the kind of like project of hair that um, um, the person in the photograph, uh, I think, their magazine, that was like the theme at a certain time. So she took, um, so Harvest took like a photograph, like depicting like hair and like subject and just, it was, I thought it was a cool series. And um, she'll talk more about that, like in the panel discussion, like in September. So let's tune in for that. Um, and this is um, Leah. Leah does like collage, like mixed media, like video, a ton of different things. and. This is a collage that she made, uh, I think, in the spring um, in one of her, uh, the classes we were in together called Poetry of the Cut. And Leah's in like college still right now, so um, she's just finishing out her undergrad. So, um, and then Harvest just graduated. So I felt like it'd be kind of cool to have different people come in and like talk about what their like experience has been so far. And this is kind of a snippet from Leah's video. She needs work done. I hope the sound. I don't need another sound. I think there's no sound. Anyway, um, so yeah, that's Leah's work and she'll talk more about her work in the future event. So again, like that. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna keep going. And so Harv is working on a project right now um, called the Asian American Adoptee Project. And this is like one of the kind of examples I think of like how this, this um, like kind of community project that I did um, will kind of affect, you know, um, like what are the actual like hopes for it and like the effects. And I feel like for me, the hopes have been to like, just inspire other people um, in my like SP community to like connect with people who they want to like build community with. And um, I feel like this is a really cool ex example that she shared with me because, you know, I didn't expect her to like make something this like interesting because she's um an asian american adoptee so she wanted to kind of like find the community um through facebook i think and so she reached out uh, like she i think she like posted or something about this project and like someone reached out to her and she did like portraits for them and i think that's like very cool and i yeah i, I think it's really cool to see where she's going with her like her like photography now and stuff so they're also here, so harvest. Um, and then in the future, for me, I wanna like kind of uh, submit to this like virtual gallery that uh, I found out about. Um, I have like space on the gallery right now. I just don't really know what to do, but um, hopefully like, I'm gonna like just keep, you know, making art and develop like a more organized art practice as I get older. Um, and then kind of like, of course, like curating is something that I'm interested in too. So just kind of like, yeah, building community and like developing an art practice that's like more consistent. Um, and yeah, I see myself working across different industries. So I don't really know exactly what my like defined like career is. Um, 
probably I think artist is like fine like <laughs> but um yeah so that's what I'm doing in the in, in the future I kind of want to get like uh, an MFA or like just maybe like assist um artists that I'm interested in um and like see where that goes um yeah so that's how that's my goals and so the next slide yeah, like, so right now I stay in like Gardena, California with my grandmother and <laughs> I work at, in Beverly Hills taking care of my friend's sister and um, I do freelance video editing and website design. And on the weekends, I like peruse like art shows like sometimes or apply to jobs and like, yeah, I just try to like, um, like do my best. <laughs> so that's what that's what I do. And if you want to connect, my um, Instagram is scrambled edges right there, or you can email, oh, <laughs> I missed a T. You can email uh, test.reinhardt at gmail.com. So, yeah, thank you. Yay, thank you so much, Tess. I appreciate you taking the time to, to dig into your your upcoming talk. Uh, just to make sure I've got, is it, it's at the end of September, so about a month away. Um, is the, the date was the 29th, is that right? Yeah, the 29th is is hopefully, I know, not hopefully, that is the date. I keep saying hopefully, that is the date, yeah. Yes, uh, so definitely keep, keep an eye out on the museum's Instagram page and the events page. For that information you'll be able to register for that talk um, and I know that some of those artists are here so thank you so much for being here and supporting Tess um, but I'm so excited to hear that talk and Tess I just appreciate you being so open um, about your your process and just very excited to, to see that and I'm also just so excited that there's another project for people to look forward to even after this this um, end of your presentation so to speak so um, definitely looking forward to that and hopefully people can check that out um, so I'm going to go ahead and take off your spotlight test, but thank you so much, so much to the fellows. Um, I'm just going to do a couple of slides to wrap up. If you need to head out, that's, that's fine. Um, but, um, I just wanted to, to talk about the lasting effects of ELA, um, and show ways that people can get involved if they wish for the next group. Um, I think it's amazing that all the fellows that just shared, um, all spoke so much about community and about how um, the community was important to them, community within their projects, um, building community with their artists that they had worked with. Um, and I also love that every project that was shared tonight was so specific and perfect for each of the fellows. Arlene with her film screening, she's just so into film and was able to, get to do that and I hope she continues that. Sydney with the virtual residency and connecting with the two artists that were so meaningful and Tess with facilitating a artist talk. And um, again, that's gonna be happening in a month, but um, continuing to work with Uproot, which Tess um, spoke about and uh, was vital in helping to create that specific program on UCSB campus, which I highly encourage everyone to look into. It's a really amazing program, um, but I just love that. And I love that um, everyone was just so, everyone's project is so um, perfect for each of them. I wanted to regroup on the goals and the outcome for ELA, just to, to bring it back to this of what the point of this program is, the goal of this program, the outcome of this program. Um, and I mentioned an, an initiative earlier called Diversifying Art Museum Leadership Initiative. Recently, uh, a report came out of the finished initiative. It was a two year long initiative that the museum was a part of that we received funding for the first two years of ELA. This third year, uh, we were not a part of that anymore. Damley had finished. So it was um, something that the museum had decided to continue um, because of the level of importance that we find with the Emerging Leaders in the Arts program. We, we still definitely find value there. We definitely wanna bring people uh, of color into our museum space. We definitely wanna build young professionals and uh, encourage them into museum careers. Um, I'm not gonna read these outcomes. I will definitely make sure that the um, published report is available on the ELA website, but um, essentially with all of the outcomes, there were several different museums that participated and um, there are several outcomes that were specifically related to how people uh, were able to receive exposure to the work of museums and how museums change the way that they interact with different groups of the community. So I find that all extremely important and um, the largest learning that was found through the 21 museums was that diversification of staff leadership needs to occur 
uh, with an understanding on all levels. And that's something that um, Museum of Contemporary Art Santa Barbara is working extremely hard to do. Um, we have diversity and inclusion trainings that are ongoing and um, it has been placed into our strategic plan to be more centered and focused on diversity and inclusion and we have certain goals to continue. Um, but um, if you're interested in collaborating with emerging leaders in the arts, if you know fellows or any individuals that would be a great fellow, if you're personally interested to be a fellow, please reach out to me. I'd love to connect with you. If you know any people that would be interested in mentoring uh, the fellows that we have, please let me know. I would love to connect with them as well. And also if you identify as a person of color, if you're interested in connecting in some way, maybe maybe you work at a nonprofit, maybe you also work at a museum uh, and you'd like to speak to the, the upcoming fellows, also reach out. And if you're interested in donating to the program um, or supporting specific fellows, supporting projects, that's also something that you can do that is extremely meaningful. Um, and last but not least, a uh, huge, huge, huge thank you. Um, first, first and foremost, thank you to the fellows for presenting tonight. Thank you so much to the, the mentors that have been extreme um, help and just ongoing support for the, the fellows throughout the year. Melinda and Iman, I know you both are here. Alexandra would definitely be here. She is in France and I believe it is two in the morning there. Uh, otherwise she would join. Um, but Melinda and Iman, um, just for the both of you and for Alexandra, when you inevitably see this, um, thank you so much for um, your ongoing support and um, your dedication to the fellows that you worked with. Um, it is, it, Goes, it can go unstated, but um, it is just beyond meaningful to uh, to them. I know that they really appreciated you and to the, the, uh, the program itself. Um, thank you to all the speakers, thank you to the collaborators and the community for being involved and the artists that were involved as well. Um, this program will continue in its fourth iteration, January of 2022, and I hope to see you um, at more of our events that we have and at Tess's talk, September 29th. I hope to see you all there. Uh, but thank you again to our fellows, and uh, thank you all for, for chiming in. But um, fellows, I will see you soon. Mentors, I will also see you soon. And have a good night, everybody. Thank you for joining.